Um, let's take a little turn here to to pornography in the same sphere, obviously. How how do you look at like a 13 year old boy, you know, stumbling upon very hardcore pornography? How is that impacting his life? Um, yeah, a lot of questions from that, but we'll see where we go. I'm more and more finding this a important topic to talk about because we all know that young teenagers are watching pornography. We all, as men, me, me and yourself, know what it was like when puberty entered our lives and how crazy the hormones are. And I'm 38, so there was no online pornography on a mobile phone when I was 13, but thank goodness there wasn't because I would have been on it 24 seven. Literally, my hormones were racing. And I'm just wondering when you are on these pornography websites, and just to be clear here, I'm not talking about adults watching pornography, right? When, it, when we talk about adults pornography, that is a different conversation. I'm trying to open the conversation on underdeveloped brains watching hours of pornography and what that is doing as the algorithm pulls them down different rabbit holes. And you're on there for an hour, and all of a sudden you're watching something that you thought was gross before you started watching it or something that was well extreme and as soon as you finish masturbating you turn that laptop off and shut that laptop as soon as you can and push it away and if you're a 13 year old going down those rabbit holes by the time you're 16 in this country age of consent is 16 you've been watching pornography for three years and you've never even kissed a girl before and what's that done to your brain and most pornography is hardcore pornography, aggressive pornography, dominating pornography. And also a lot of it is where it's all about the man's pleasure and the girl is used to serve that. So what kind of narrative are, are, we, are, we, are we giving to these young people? And it's so weird, isn't it? Because everything else has an age restriction on it. Alcohol, cigarettes, driving, even certain films have an age restriction on them. You know, films have an 18 age restriction on them because they've got one scene of somebody getting undressed to have sex, it, you know? There's one nipple. <laughs> <laughs> you know, straight 18 certification, you're not allowed to watch it. But then yeah. you've got all of this hardcore pornography online that anyone's um, allowed, to, allowed to watch. And I, I want to continue learning about that and the effects of it. Now, Emily Setti, who you've had on your podcast, has great approaches to these things. And by the way, I would encourage anyone that's listening to this to go and check out your conversation with Emily Setti, because I've actually done some workshops with her, um, with young teenage boys, and she holds their attention so, so well. She's so unique with what she does. And she's like, yeah, okay, we are going to be waiting for a long time for the government to put regulations on this, yeah? Because you've got to fight because the pornography websites don't want a regulation on their sites because they're going to lose views, lose advertising money. I reckon a large percent of, percentage of their views comes from young teenagers. So she's like, instead of us trying to constantly go on about how there should be an 18 certificate on there, which I think we all agree there should be, let's just talk to these young people on a level about what they're watching right? For them to be aware of what rabbit holes they're going down. But nobody wants to talk to young people about what they're watching or on their porn sites. Parents were never going to do that. I think fathers would feel weird doing that because they're watching it themselves. And so it's like, it's like a very weird situation that we're in. But I think is a big prediction from me. I bet you it's going to end up the same as something like the journey that smoking went on. Mm. because if you think about smoking like back in the day when it first came out there were adverts on tv talking about how the, the great lifestyle smoking can bring you everyone was hacking darts dude yeah. everyone <laughs> <laughs> yeah and and then and then you had it where i remember when i was a young child you used to have um advertising on formula one cars which was smoking then I remember my dad used to be used to go to the back of the aeroplane when we used to go and visit Sri Lanka, where my parents are from, and have a cigarette because there used to be smoking area at the back. <laughs> then I remember, then I remember, like when you used to go into a restaurant, there was smoking on the left and non-smoking on the right. The place must have stunk of smoke. Then I remember having a cigarette, like on the dance floor, like that is wild. And and like our children, for anybody that has got children are going to look back at those times and be like, what were you lot playing at? Yeah. Like, that is so stupid. 
And I feel like there's going to be the same narrative around pornography in the decades to come. I mean, I, I hope so, man, because it's just, it's really bad right now. It's really bad. Um, just the, the sheer volume and easy access to all of these things on the internet is, is, is you already see the downstream effects. Like I, I think a lot about modern dating and you already see the downstream effects of young men. Like young men are you know, less active in society. They're not getting their driver's licenses early. They're not having sex as often. And you think you hear that like, okay, who cares? They're not having sex as often. But what that simply means is that they're not going out into the world and approaching women in real time. Like they're not having conversations. They're not creating relationships. They're not learning how to get rejected by women over and over and over again. They're not learning how to talk or be or be more confident. They're just like, oh, I'll just go home and I'll masturbate to <laughs> these thousands of beautiful women on my phone. Yeah. yeah. And it's super easy. And yeah. then I can go into a virtual world and then I can work from home and then I can get my food delivered to my house. And I can get alcohol delivered to my house. And like Maybe if I want to work out, I could do it at my house, but like <laughs> everything can be done in this like small area. And so you already see the downstream effects of that. And already in the modern dating market, men and women are, are already very divisive. Like it has to, it's so adversarial right now because if women elevate, men have to push them down. If women are elevated, they have to push them down. Like it can't be an elevation of together. So we're just creating higher standards for our partnerships and our relationships. And so if young boys at 13, 14, 15 are watching, you know, women just get dominated by these dudes on the pornography. Again, that's how they're going to think that if they ever encounter a real woman in real time, that's how they think they should approach it. And this woman should be like easy, submissive, like just fall mm. at my feet. No, you have to, you have to have effort, just like mm. everything we're talking about. You have to be an eligible person. You have to carry yourself with, with confidence and grace and kindness and respect for the opposite sex to create relationships that last forever. Because the good life, no matter how you spin it, is, is built on two things, good health and good relationships. It's Amazing. very simple. It's like not hard. We make life way too complicated. Like take care of yourself and take care of your relationships. And it's very Amazing. simple. Um, and so that's not going to be taught on a phone watching, you know, a, a gangbang or a dominatrix or whatever the fuck you're watching. And, and no shame for watching that stuff. Like maybe you have to explore all of those things. But like you're talking about with the cigarettes, the thing that's happening now that's super cool is all of these podcasts, these strong powerful men and women are talking about this on podcasts, like in real time, like this is what's going to happen. If you do this, I watched pornography for 10 years. This is what happened to me. This is how my brain felt. This is where I, I got left off. This is how I didn't achieve this thing. Like if you can take control and have intentionality over the things that you do, it's just like scrolling on Twitter. If you have, or Instagram, if you have some, in, a little bit of intentionality with your, I'm going on Twitter or Instagram to find this thing, to read this new story, to do this thing. And I'm giving myself a time restriction. After 15 minutes, I'm done. Now, that's a, that's a better approach to pornography than just saying, I'm going to get on here and I'm going to see what pops up. Like, you don't know what the fuck is going to pop up, you know? And so there's, there can be little tiny steps that you can take to create a little more intentionality with how you view your sexuality and how you view yourself. Because then once you get into a powerful relationship, you're going to have to express what you need and what you want and what you like and what you don't like. And if all you've seen is on the internet, you don't really know. You don't really know. You haven't had the consensual relationships to explore those types of things. Um, you summarized it so, so well. And hopefully, you know, these young boys, which, you know, there's going to be countless of them i'm hoping that like as you mentioned more and more people are talking about this subject they just become more aware of what they're watching because the danger is that out of all of those young boys that are watching this and going down these rabbit holes which we agree is dangerous you're, you're going to get that one percent that actually go and it takes them down a road that they would have never have gone down before and i'm talking about now offending right mm -hmm. about taking that very dominating, aggressive sexual behavior that they've been watching for years and actually applying it in real life. And, uh, you know, I haven't seen any research, but a question is if you could, if you could go through sex offenders, pornography history, I wonder if you'd start seeing some correlation there.